Hey, it's mRandom101, and today I have another Japanese manga haul. This time around, I've combined two hauls worth of Beastars, and I wanted to show that one of the boxes came in really banged up and damaged. So that's always fun. Now, I'm really happy that I've finally just caught up to this series, and I've basically completed it since I have volume 22, which is the final one, coming in the mail. So that's going to finish the whole series for me. And Beastars is a manga that has a special place in my heart. I started reading it back in 2017, early 2017, when the scanlations for the series had just started out. Basically, no one knew about the manga at that point. Even in Japan, it was quite obscure. I was worried at the time um, would the manga like survive? Would it sell enough? But thankfully, in 2018, the series just generally won like four manga awards, and that boosted the popularity quite a bit. So I'm really happy that things turned out the way they did. All right, I thought I skipped over a volume, but never mind. Okay. <laughs> Volume 10, and Volume 11. As a side note, I took off the obis, which are these promotional wraparound jacket things from the volume, since they kind of just get in the way. These mainly just promote a milestone in the series, or like an anime, stuff like that. Let's continue. So, Volume 12. Beastars is one of my favorite manga in general. One of my favorite shonen series from recent memory for sure. And it's been a while since I bought any Beastars actually. Like volume one, I purchased it in July in 2017. So I love the color work from Itagaki Paru. And speaking of this mangaka, she is actually the daughter of one of the daughters of the creator that makes Baki, and that's also from like the same magazine where Beastars was serialized, which is a Weekly Shonen Champion, so I thought that was kind of fun and interesting. All right, volume 17. Volume 18, so wholesome. What do I have to do to like make a um, art book for Beastars to happen? Do I need to like pray to the Shadow Lord or something? Make it happen, please, Akita Shonen, which is like the publishing company behind Beastars. Make it happen. Thank you. Volume 21. And here is a massive overview shot with the volumes. It barely just fits. Speaking of an art book, the special edition for volume 22, which was like an animate store exclusive in Japan, does come with a mini art book, but, you know, I would like to see a proper art book release with all of the color illustrations that Itagaki Paru has done over the course of like the last four years, because this manga has such a cool style. I want to just showcase some of the fun Legosi illustrations that are included, kind of like with all of the volumes, I think. All right, now Beastars is one of the most original manga ideas I've seen, and there is nothing out there quite like it, in all honesty, in anime and manga. So I really appreciate everything that Itagaki Paru thought of and conceptualized with just this universe of Beastars. And there is also a manga called Beast Complex, which is a spin-off from Beastars, which takes place in the same setting, but it focuses on other groups of characters that aren't really related to the main Beastars storyline. Initially, there was like one volume for that, and now 
uh, new chapters are releasing. So there's going to be three volumes of Beast Complex in total. And I will get back to Beast Complex later into the video because there is something else to mention about it. All right. Oh, okay. Beast Stars. The main general like idea behind the manga is suffering, I guess. That's like the, uh, the common factor that both the carnivores and the herbivores in the series have to, you know, deal with. You know, thinking about it, how do you even like properly pronounce herbivore? Is it herbivore? Herbivore? I think I'll just say herbivore. I think both ways works, but I guess we're getting sidetracked here. All right. Beastars takes place in a very human-like society, except it's obviously populated by these anthropomorphic animals. The carnivores are generally really fierce, um, yeah, fearsome, strong. They have claws, they have uh, really sharp teeth, and the herbivores are much weaker and basically more or less defenseless against the carnivores. A lot of stuff happened in this uh, in this universe of Beastars, and this society has reached the point where basically eating meat, eating other animals, like carnivores eating herbivores, is not allowed. And this is not the optimal ideal solution, since carnivores need meat in order to, um, I don't know, in order to be prosperous. They need the meat in order to flourish as creatures. Meat is the most nourishing and nutritionally valuable food for carnivores. They need it. It's not like an optional thing. It is something that they absolutely need. Then you have the herbivores, which have to kind of just constantly live in the fear of literally being eaten alive by the carnivores that just go crazy and insane due to the fact that they have this constant hunger within them because they are not satisfied with the nourishment that they have without the meat. And, you know, there are uh, eggs in the society, there is milk, whatever, cheese, I think. Is there cheese? Whatever. Um, the point is, it's not enough. A lot of the carnivores go crazy. And this just creates a perpetual cycle of just suffering. Both the carnivores and the herbivores are suffering. That is what... Um, both of the species basically, well, all of the species in the series have this in common. They're suffering, and that is the core common theme and factor behind the manga, in my opinion, at least. And there is no solution that is easy. There is no, you know, proper way of going about things. And that creates a really intriguing, fun narrative to follow. The setting behind Beastars is so original and just jam-packed with ideas and the mangaka just constantly builds up lore um, and it just adds layers upon layers of like you know this is what this species does here's a fun fact about this universe it's absolutely astonishing to see how many ideas itagaki paru just compiled into this manga and also in beast complex that kind of like also builds into the universe this is so amazing. I really, I, I haven't seen many other manga that have such well-built settings, in all honesty. And yeah, I, I really loved this manga for its whole run. Let's see. What else would there be to add? Okay, yeah, Beast Complex. Speaking of that, Itagaki Paru is in her 20s at this point, and... When she graduated from college in her early 20s, she was struggling to find a job. When she was in college, she was in some kind of like a manga club or art club where she made some doujinshi that were called Beast Complex. I think there's like three of them in total. And that was back in 2013. Starting with 2013, she, she began to conceptualize, you know, Legosi, Haru, other characters, just the universe of Beastars was already like 
beginning its creation at that point. She did mention that she was constantly drawing doodles and all kinds of sketches with these anthropomorphic animals. And all of that eventually led to this amazing award-winning serialization. And I'm just so happy that everything worked out. All right, now I'm going to try to kind of like wrap things up, but I'm gonna show what's under the slip covers for the volumes. It's just mini comics, various things. All right, if there is anything else for me to add, I'll try doing it now. I did mention that like eating meat is not allowed in this universe, but obviously uh, there are ways around this. This is something that gets addressed throughout the whole series, basically. I'm not going to go into details due to spoilers. All right. And also maybe I need to better explain uh, the two different versions of Beast Complex. So the initial Beast Complex, okay, this is like uh, the process of drawing, you know, the chapters, some panels, that's cool. All right, here's some more. I appreciate this type of stuff. All right, let's go back to what I was saying. The original Beast Complex is just the three volume doujinshi that Itagaki Paru made in her college days. And the new Beast Complex is just a compilation of one-shot stories, and that also has three volumes. Those are actually like currently being published um, as volumes as of right now. So hopefully that clears up any potential confusion. All right, seriously, we need a Beastars art book. I kind of feel like it will happen because, come on, it's such an obvious choice. We will see, we will see. I'm just trying to like wrap this video up because I feel like it's probably been going on for a while, but hopefully you found some enjoyment. We're almost there. Some four comma comics. Yeah, the earlier volumes just seem to mostly have some kind of like four comma stuff. Oh gosh. And with this, the video wraps up. Thanks for watching and bye.